Howdy folks, today we are starting a new series on uh, these little uh, theoretically hi-fi amplifiers. You see these guys all over the place. They all come in this same kind of extruded aluminum case here. They all have the same basic uh, front end and uh, they all run on 12 volts. They come with uh, various power supplies, which there's a whole religious debate around how much the power supply matters. And uh, I thought it would make the most sense to start this series with the amplifier that started it off. This is by no means a new piece of kit. These have been out for, I don't know, maybe five or 10 years. But uh, right now on the bench, we've got the Leapi LP2020A+. So the real downside of this guy is you can't get it anymore. It's no longer being manufactured and every place I've seen who used to sell them is out of stock. But there are a whole bunch of clones from a bunch of different brands, uh, everything from Lepi to LV Pin to Kinter to, I don't know, even Pile has uh, some stuff in this, in this same form factor. So yeah, we're going to take a look around and see what, see what these things can actually do. Uh, I've already, as you can see, hooked it up to a kind of non-trivial test rig here. Instead of limiting ourselves with the power supplies that are shipped with these things, I actually want to look at uh, what kind of power it really uses. So I've got the bench power supply here that'll be uh, running that so we can see, we can try uh, feeding it with different voltages and see what kind of amperage it uses. Uh, we're going to be measuring with the uh, DMM over here, just the uh, AC voltage that's being sent out to the speakers. Uh, this guy here is a uh, sound level meter, so that'll tell us the uh, decibel level in the room. Uh, for the test harness, we're going to be using a set of uh, JBL LX22s. These are uh, these were my rears before I rebuilt the uh, most recent set of HPMs, so now they're going to be test bench. I'll probably do another video in the future talking about uh, speaker efficiency, comparing uh, one of the little amps here with the uh, JBLs, with the HPMs, and uh, with a set of uh, Infinity Reference 4s that I've got upstairs right now. So you can uh, get a little bit of info around, you know, different volume levels, sound pressure, things like that, that you can get out of uh, a single lamp just based on the speakers that you're running. And then uh, this guy over here is a uh, distortion detector. It's uh, designed to work with uh, either a 40 hertz or a one kilohertz signal. And what it does is it tells you exactly when that signal starts breaking apart when it hits 1% uh, total harmonic distortion, which is the, you know, the threshold where people generally consider it to be distorted enough that you no longer want to listen to it. So because these, you know, these amps all say things like, you know, this one claims to be 20 watts, which is a pretty reasonable thing. I've got others that claim to be, you know, up to 100 watts when the power supply that comes with it is like 10 watts. And there are a lot of ridiculous things like that, but most of these uh, distort out well before you get anywhere near the top of the range. So a lot of the measurements that we're going to be doing are getting the getting the real world useful range here. So you know it doesn't matter if you can turn it up louder if what you if the louder isn't worth listening to. So what I what I think I'm going to wind up plotting out is uh, when the when the uh, SMD over here originally detects the signal and when it uh, hits 1% total harmonic distortion, we'll get the power input readings, the voltage on, you know, that's actually going out to the speakers, uh, which is, you know, really kind of non-scientific, but uh, it'll get us, you know, a good dead reckoning, as well as the sound pressure in the room. Now, again, this is, you know, kind of non-scientific being that the background noise in the room will change. But again, this is just kind of all relative and for dead reckoning. So hopefully, hopefully this will give folks an idea of what these, what these different little things can do. So from there, let's uh, go ahead and power things up and see what we can do. All right, so I've got my function generator set up here. Uh, channel one is set up, let's see. Oh, I thought I had this set up, apparently not. All right, there we go. So now we have channel one set up for 40 hertz, full amplitude, and we have channel two 
is set up for one kilohertz. So we can test both of the both the low frequency and the high frequency that the uh, SMD is designed for. So let's, uh, if we start on the low frequency and turn him on, start with the amplifier off, turn the power supply on. So starting with 12 volts here, which is kind of our, our baseline that guy up, make sure the volume's all the way up on the source, and, and we get our nice 40 hertz hum. So, all right. So now before I go too much farther, put on my hearing protection. All right, we're going to start with uh, 40 hertz, 12 volts. Looks like our ambient is about 44. kilohertz. All right, and now let's try pulling up the input voltage a bit. You can push these guys quite a bit harder than they're uh, than they're rated for most of them anyway. The uh, tripath chips are, are rated uh, notably better than the, the twelve volts that these things uh, tend to tend to claim they want. You can probably see the uh, LED flickering a little bit here. Uh, that's actually not uh, due to overdriving the voltage here. The uh, LED has actually been flaky on this for a couple of years, running off the uh, stock power supply. Uh, that's another one I'll probably make another video in the future as I go and figure out how to, how to fix it, replace that, maybe change the colors and you know, do some fun stuff with that. And yeah, we'll see where that winds up. All right, so looking at the data here, you can see that uh, where it's originally detected stays about the same. The distortion level, however, uh, you can get up louder before you get to distortion. Yeah, you've got 69.8 decibels, 70.4 decibels, or up to 72 decibels here before you get to that 1% that distortion. Uh, given that this is the, uh, the only functioning original LP2020A plus that I've got, I don't want to push it any uh, past 14 volts here. I may uh, blow up one of, the, one of the other ones that I can still get and you know, see how much voltage it'll take before it pops. But, uh, but yeah, I think that's a, a pretty good breakdown and I'll type up the table here and put it down in the description. And uh, I think, oh, look, the meter's done. I think that'll be a uh, pretty good start there for the, uh, for the data table to uh, compare everybody else to. So now let's shut this guy off, 
get some things out of the way here and uh, take a look inside so we can uh, compare some of the other units to uh, you know, build quality and just what the innards look like and, uh, you know, verify things have the, the chips that they claim they do and all that good stuff. So. This one does not have one of those weird Heat sinks on the bottom. Let's see, probably need to. Yeah, that's right. Because the, the front panel is attached to the uh, main board, as are these uh, back jacks. So we really didn't need to take out the, uh, the corner mounts for the back panel. I'll put those back in quick. And now take out this one. This whole board should slide out the front. Oh, one more. On the input jacks. There. there we go. So there's not a lot in the case. But the, uh, so the board itself, when you're trying to tell if one of these guys is genuine, the uh, big deal is this guy right here. So let me see if I can get it up so you can actually see. Probably not gonna be able to get this to focus, but we can try. Uh, so you can kind of see it there. That is a uh, genuine tripath chip right there. So let's see if I take it off frame here so I can actually see it. Yeah, it's a TA2020-020. So that's what we would uh, expect to be in there. And so yeah, this is the, uh, the real deal and the uh, first one of the series. So as for build quality, there's, there's not a lot to say. It's a, uh, you know, it's a single piece board little bit of you know kind of celastic holding the uh capacitors in place which is kind of nice uh this is that uh led ring that i'm gonna have to figure out how to deal with if you look uh look close here it's actually got uh it's got one led here and it's got another led here and then the whole ring that you see from outside is actually just uh you know a plastic lens basically so We'll have to see if one of these guys is dying or isn't getting, you know, a good solid connection or what's going on there. I might just try, you know, resoldering the, the pins and see what that does. And if that doesn't work, maybe we'll play around with replacing them, you know, again, see, see if we can do different colors or, you know, something like that just for funsies. Uh, yeah, but uh, we'll, we'll keep this guy around on the bench to compare the others to because, uh, as we'll see in future videos, some of the other amps look almost identical to this. Others are very, very different. So, and uh, different isn't always good. So, yeah. Yeah, one other quick thing I forgot to mention uh, while I'm sticking this guy back together. Uh, one thing you'll notice on the uh, data there is that uh, the amperage never got anywhere near a problem for uh, any of the power supplies these things ship with. The the smallest one I've ever seen ship is a uh, 2 amp and there are a lot of people who swear up and down that you need a uh, 5 amp or 10 amp power supply to be able to drive these things but uh, when it's not even going to use it that's uh, not gonna not gonna make much of a difference there so We'll see if uh, those numbers change when we when we run it with uh, some different speakers. But uh, with these little uh, bookshelf guys, it's definitely not pulling enough power that uh, the uh, beefy power supply argument really holds up. So we'll see how that goes in the future. And uh, once I get that sorted, I'll put up a little card here and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So yeah, thanks again. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.